Hello everyone, um, as you may know I'm uh, an architect and landscape planner so in this occasion I have invited uh, Ken that is an expert in all new technologies uh, for uh, having models for the city and the landscape and the territory so he's gonna talk about uh, his job so thank you very much Ken uh, You're welcome, it's a pleasure to be here <laughs> Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit like uh, what is your work, what is this new uh, format that you are doing to do better and more easy databases for the cities and the landscape and the territory? Well, um, yes, I am a postdoc researcher at the Universe, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands mm -hmm. and one of the things we're working on is a 3D modeling standard called mm -hmm. CityJSON. Um, the idea of CityJSON is that anyone, especially cities, can release models of the, both the city and the surrounding territory. Mm -hmm. And these models are structured in, um, with semantics, so that means that you not only say that um, this is some kind of flat surface, but mm -hmm. you say that it is a wall or that it's a roof. Okay. And these are kind of structured models that are quite simple so the idea is that they can be manipulated by well, created updated and manipulated by anyone mm -hmm. and can be used for all sorts of analysis in the city so you can do maybe urban planning you can do flood modeling you can do wind simulations you can uh, figure out if you want to install solar panels on which buildings like uh, maybe facing in a certain direction mm -hmm. uh, how much energy you would get or how much energy is spent based on the materials uh, of buildings, isolation. Yes, and I mean, uh, from my perspective, uh, more like from a planner, that I see there are all these challenges for, uh, I mean, environmental challenges that we have to face. Uh, of course, we pl planners, I mean, we need to plan changes. So, of course, I mean, all what you're saying, we have to consider sun, radiation, wind, I mean, other sources of energy. I mean, how we can implement this in the, in the cities and in the landscape too. And also the other part, like how these models can help us to engage people. So, I mean, maybe you can explain us a little bit, like uh, examples, you have already talked with certain authorities to implement this, how it had worked, uh, what is your experiences of um, how this can uh, be implemented and taking bad persons, I mean, how this can help people? Well, uh, we're currently doing a lot of work, mostly in the Netherlands. So we have contacts with uh, different cities, like uh, especially the city of Rotterdam, but mm -hmm. also The Hague and Amsterdam, mm -hmm. to release uh, their 3D models in our format. Mm -hmm. They already have uh, their own format, which is called Rotterdam 3D, mm -hmm. uh, but it is not really widely used because it's not very accessible mm -hmm. and it is not accessible because it is not well supported by other software or other tools mm -hmm. so right now it's kind of a showcase of what can be done but it's not being used in practice and what we want to do with a city JSON our format mm -hmm. is to make it uh, available for everyone so um, a an example for this is that we are having master students for a master thesis mm -hmm. and there's so much interest in CityJSON that everyone has picked all the topics that we have suggested related to CityJSON because mm -hmm. it's so easy to work with that you can do a lot so you're not spending time um, trying to recreate things or trying to read the format uh, you can actually get to do things directly and I think this sort of thing applies to architects as well mm -hmm. so right now it uh, at least from our perspective, it feels like a lot of time is being lost uh, by architects because every time you want to figure out uh, solar radiation, for instance, mm -hmm. maybe you have to create your own models, you have to start uh, modeling the neighboring buildings or the surroundings of what you uh, want to compute. Mm -hmm. um, you have to start figuring out the properties of the materials, but all of this information is already there. Mm -hmm. And if it's provided by the city, mm -hmm. you can uh, enable automatic analysis for anyone. And th this reduces a lot of the time that is being wasted and you can provide a much better product for... Yes, yeah, so I mean, oh. now the explanation is uh, to implement this first, the authorities have to 
put their databases or create these databases in this format and as you say you're doing this so it's very accessible so it could be like from big cities to small cities that could be implemented and maybe you can explain us a little bit more like I mean how all this process is done because I mean maybe someone doesn't understand or like I mean what is exactly this format how it works I mean to explain a little bit more uh, uh, well maybe I can start from uh, the fact that it just not, doesn't have to be the authorities creating it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, another related project that we're working on is a software called Treatifier, mm -hmm. in which you basically input um, a map of the territory mm -hmm. that you want to model, and um, what is called a LiDAR point cloud. So it's basically a, a big set of points that are measured either from an airplane or from a helicopter, from a drone or from the ground. And it has a sort of a 3D model. So it's basically a, a laser that, going, that goes back and forth mm -hmm. and it creates a point in 3D space. Mm -hmm. um, these kinds of data sets are being created in a very large scale. Uh, like in the Netherlands, there's a publicly available data set covering all of the country. Mm -hmm. So based on this kind of 2D map that says what is there, and the uh, point cloud that tells us the shape of things but doesn't have any information about what these things are, mm -hmm. we can combine them together to create models of cities. Okay. So, uh, for instance, we are able to create models of all of the Netherlands. Okay. Automatically. Okay, so, I mean, this format, uh, as you say, I mean, this is the first step to make, uh, to, to have all this information and this could be made automatically. We, it's done partly automatically and we're working on making the models better. Okay. And then what would be like the next step uh, to, to use this tool or...? Uh, well, actually after that you can enable a lot of applications. So for instance, if you are an architect, mm -hmm. uh, right now we're working on a, another related project where we want to automate certain kinds of checks. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that uh, authorities could issue building permits automatically. Okay. So based on a 3D model of the city, of the surrounding area, plus a new construction that you're designing in software, you would be able to upload the, your design mm -hmm. and then it could be tested automatically whether it meets maybe uh, the rules for zoning, uh, whether it creates too much of a shadow on neighboring buildings, uh, what is like the energy efficiency, what it, where whether the building is accessible, maybe for a wheelchair. Okay. So a lot of rules can be tested automatically and many of these rules actually depend on the surrounding city, mm -hmm. like for uh, energy efficiency, solar radiation. Okay. And then you don't have to model as an architect all of the surroundings of the buildings you are designing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can focus on just your one building and you have data for everything else. Okay. This is very interesting. <laughs> So, I mean, now it would be uh, building per permits. You also told me about this, uh, that it could also, because you have all this information, can be also an en engagement for, uh, that the population is engaging in, in decisions. And uh, have, have you worked a little bit in this? or We haven't worked on that uh, yet so much, but the idea is that we want to create this format and to make it as simple uh, as possible, because Whenever you start designing uh, some sort of format, it's very easy to start adding more and more features uh, until it becomes so complex that uh, regular people cannot really work with it. You mm -hmm. need to be an expert. But we are really pushing for simplicity. Uh, and the aim is that anyone who with an interest can start uh, manipulating these models and also uh, people who, well, who are currently left out of the process, like mm -hmm. small towns that don't really have the uh, expertise to create their own 3D city models can create them if we provide a simpler way to do it. Okay, so it's all about creating simpler way of doing the models. This is already like done, and the next step is to finding all these applications that could be very interesting. Yes, uh, we are trying to do several things. So we are talking with uh, other cities and other countries, mm -hmm. so that they start adopting this uh, format for mm -hmm. their 3D city models then we are also pushing them to release these 3 city models publicly mm -hmm. because when you make it public, you enable everyone to use them. And even though it has a cost, it's, uh, it can be clearly offset by all the applications that uh, can come out. 
like there's a, a lot of talk about uh, smart cities and a lot of smart city applications can come from this. Um, well, and I think afterwards we can also work with uh, people, more accessibility about their own city, so they should uh, participate in the, in the decision making process with the knowledge they can gain from the sort of models and for this I think it's important that uh, people start developing tools mm -hmm. but these tools will be much easier to uh, create with a simpler format that's already taught um, yeah, for simplicity yeah and uh, so I mean for all this uh, because this is a project that is still developing I mean the next question will be like I mean, cities or planners or universities that would like to use this uh, format because it's efficient and easy to, to get all this information. I mean, where are the licenses? What is the process now of development? How people can en engage? Well, we are following a completely open development process, so everything is available on our GitHub repository and we have a, also the CityJSON website. Uh, I think we can leave the links uh, below. Mm -hmm. And well, if you are a developer and you want to be involved in developing software, uh, please contact us and we are interested in uh, helping you. See, all the um, uh, standard and all of the small pieces of software we have developed are put there as well. The CityJSON standard is, uh, on, is released under the public domain, so anyone who is interested can use it. Uh, we if you want to make uh, any improvements to the standard, any, suge any suggestions, you can also put them uh, as an issue in uh, the GitHub repository. We are very open to any suggestions or changes you might have. Um, if you are more like a city and you want to release your city or your town in uh, the city JSON format, we can try to help you as well. So uh, feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much. and. I mean, uh, we are very passionate about uh, public transport, for example, or like how all the city plan, uh, how Mexico, we are from Mexico both, so I mean, we are very interested in how uh, Mexico could develop infrastructure with all these things. So maybe we do another video in another time, but uh, thank you very much, and I hope this uh, helps a lot to planning cities. This. Thank you very much. It has been a very nice talk, and I would love to have another video. <laughs>